Good morning, Asia, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Asian Preview, North American Wrap. Before we talk about the FX market and macro, for that matter, breaking news. Sadly, England lost to Croatia 2-1 in extra time. It was a good game. England scored early. McCurin, uh Trippier, free kick. And uh, after that, I don't think they had another shot on goal. They kind of sat back. They let Croatia attack and, uh, and look kind of back foot all day. Similar to how many of the currencies looked versus the dollar. Very back foot. So we'll get into the, some of the charts. There were a few uh, interesting patterns today. We'll start out with uh, with Dollar Canada. Uh, bullish engulfing, you know, massive up day. Actually sold off initially. You can see we have a double bottom here now. Made a new low by one tick and then exploded higher with the rest of the dollar strength and we're back up at 132.10. Um, Got down to 130.65. Uh, kind of missed that. It was frustrating. Um, it was a bank of Canada hike rates, and people were expecting a dovish hike, and he sounded kind of upbeat. And then I think it just kind of seemed to just go higher with the rest of the dollars. Um, if we look at some of the yen crosses, dollar yen had a, had a monster day. Remember, we were we were selling it in Asia last night. And it got stopped out above 111.15, which was the original Asia high. You can see what we've done here. We're right up at this three quarters from 112.22. The high today was, uh, you know, pretty much right there, uh, 112.17. So there should be some resistance right around here. There are some old lows around this 112.05 level. So I think this is an area of. Let me get rid of some of these trend lines. These are old. Um, yeah, there, there's definitely some old lows right here on this dash line. 112.05 to 112.20 looks important to me. Should be some resistance. Um, I get the feeling the market was just short dollar yen, and the initial reaction last night was selling yen crosses. Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, and the like, CAD yen, Euro yen, and uh, market got caught offside. So, <clears throat> you know, pretty powerful up day there. If you take a look at the Euro yen chart, uh, we were also short that yesterday, bullish engulfing. Let me scroll in, and a close above the 100 day moving average, 130.25 ish. That looks like it's going straight line here to me. Um, you know, we pretty much got the close we needed, depending on when you take your closes. Sterling in charge. Sterling didn't do a whole lot today. Uh, it did sell off late in the day, but here's another one. Um, a new low by a tick and power and higher back up toward the 100 day. Um, dollar Turkey that is just a disaster. We're now trading, trading 489. It got up, it took out the all time high. 492.90, I think it was. Um, got that 497. So it looks like they probably got some retail, uh, Japanese retails uh, stopped out of that. So it's all very confusing. Uh, the dollar index did well back up to 94.72. Um, this is the area here, this 95.50, double top. We start taking that out. I think there's going to be some massive, massive pain in the emerging market space. Um, if we pop over to equities, something is not right. You know what? Before we go to equities, let's let's go to oil. Oil. I got on my oil puts yesterday. Sadly, it fucking collapsed today. Five percent actually. Still have my wheat puts that dropped five percent as well, but. That one stung a little bit. 
Here's the oil chart. Massive, massive draw. Um, a build in, in distillates and it collapses. So you can tell the market is really long this. We have got to find a place to sell this. I like this 7220 area uh, up to 7280, 7290, uh, old high, old low. We are back below this old high here at 7290. And we took out that low from la the uh, a few days ago. I think it was Friday. So big down bar. You know, I guess you could blame some of the uh, some of the uh, trade war rhetoric, as I as I uh, said yesterday. We got the tit last night. We didn't get the tat. Um, one other thing we're looking at again. I, I'm becoming increasingly bearish equities. I know that is sounds crazy because they seem to be impossible to short, but um, it looks like some of the, there was a headline that came out earlier. It looks like some of the uh, sovereign wealth funds are starting to to pare back on, on their equity exposure. Um, that would probably include some the likes of the Swiss National Bank that owns a shitload of uh, tech stocks, FANG stocks. Um, so that's something that we're we're going to watch. Um, let me pop over the S and P's. You can see the S and P's got hit yesterday on the uh, <clears throat> on the Trump tweet late in the day, and they never really recovered. I mean, they they did bounce a little bit from twenty seven sixty six, but it's interesting. You've got dollar yen, sterling yen, euro yen exploding higher. Yet you're seeing strength in dollar in, in the dollar across the board, including dollar emerging markets. I'm wondering if uh, you know some of these guys that have done quite well in both the S&P and Nasdaq this year. They're starting to uh, get a bit worried. Um, you know, we had a Doji in the Nasdaq, and we kind of another Doji today. Um, I wonder if they, you know, you're going to start seeing the market on holidays, the World Cup's coming to an end, and then we have about a week or so until the end of July. And, uh, you know, then August, the European vacation, not the movie, but European vacations kick in. And I think that some of the asset managers are looking to take some chips off the table. Um, again, we remain optimistic as a long volatility um trading style that we preach, uh, we're looking for some heightened volatility in kind of late August into the end of the year. And I'm wondering if, uh, you know, I, I'm paying close attention to the equity market because it could be earnings related, it could be trade war, whatever it is, when these FANG stocks decide that they are done going up and they're starting to lose momentum according to one of my analysts I would be very careful because I think you can see it easily at 30 percent drop in some of the fang stocks and you know maybe a 20 percent drop in the broad uh, equity complex um, so pay attention gold surely is way too cheap. I listened to a podcast today. The guy's like, it's time to start shipping in some gold. You can see here that the momentum is kind of, you know, it, to me, it seems like it's running out of gas a little bit here on the downside. Crude oil, everyone and their mother is long crude. Everyone is bullish. Everyone's calling for 80, 90, $100 oil by year end. That's bullshit. We are in a seasonal, uh, the seasonals for oil is horrible starting in July, and that can go on for a few months. I think today, yesterday's doji bar, and today's reaction after a massive draw of 12 million barrels, I think we're due for a correction. I see this going back, you know, $10 lower easily, um, you know, back down to 62, eight, I'll call it eight, eight, nine dollars lower. Um, so that's something that we're 
looking at, I'll probably be looking to buy some 65 puts tomorrow. Um, this is rolling over. It's time. Oil's, oil's done its thing. So watch oil. Watch the dollar. Obviously, when the dollar rallies, it puts pressure on oil. Dollar rallies puts major pressure on the funding currencies. Um, you know, the, the emerging markets with horrible balance sheets. And uh, while we're at it here, let's take a look at EM. Yeah, that's a messy chart. It's like a dollar turkey if you want to see something that looks like it could go a lot, lot higher. Um, started pricing up some 530 calls yesterday when we were trading 470. I think they're about 35, 30% for two month. That could be 530 by the end of the week. So watch, watch, uh, watch dollar turkey as a, uh, you know, a risk barometer. Um, pretty much, they're doing pretty much everything. Er Erdogan is doing everything possible to destroy this currency and, you know, appointing his son-in-law. That'd be like appointing, that'd be like Trump appointing uh, Kushner, the complete D-bag, Jared Kushner into like the most important, um, you know, basically taking over the treasury, Stephen Mnuchin's job in the U.S. Anyhow, enough, uh, enough of the rant here. Um, pissed off that England didn't go through. I'll be in London on Sunday. I was looking forward to uh, watching England France in the World Cup final with some of my uh, some of my mates, but uh, I guess we'll have to root on uh, root on France in the final. Vive la France! And you'll hear from us in the European Open. Good luck. Cheers.